Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and I'm here with Dr. Normal. And tonight's guest is Scott McCarty of Lock It to You. Well, hi. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for having me tonight. Before we get started, um, I want to say that, you know, it's November, we're going into the holiday season, and so we're taking a little bit of a different tack with Strange of Life for the next few weeks, and part of that is that we're going to talk with Scott about uh, Lock It To You, which is a company that was created this year, mm-hmm. and that he and his wife have brought up from from the ground yeah. using some social media skills. That's right, yeah. So before we get into what you've done with Lock It To You, why don't you tell us uh, what it is that you make and how it all got started? Because what month was it? We first started making the very first lockets that we made was right about this time last year. Okay. It was actually for uh, our friend Barbara, her birthday. And the very first locket actually didn't have resin on it or anything like that. And... Um, it just kind of grew into that. We, Miranda, my wife, had an Etsy site called Button Envy, where we made uh, Scrabble bracelets and um, other uh, jewelry items that were basically the theme was you know resin covered, fun, affordable, recycled, upcycled jewelry, mm-hmm. and we just kind of fell into the lockets. Uh, the lockets. We slowly started making them, and we saw that they became like maybe like a quarter of our sales, then a third of our sales, and then half of our sales were the lockets. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, we really have to develop this idea. I really want to take this over, you know, focus on the lockets. And then um, we we really started Lock Lock It To You. We registered the site in December, December 15th, I think, on Etsy. Mm -hmm. And... um, but we just uh, basically, I just I just registered the name because I didn't want somebody because I, I you I land think, grabbed exactly <laughs> basically. Well, it's because we, I was at a craft show and I mentioned it to someone, and I could kind of see like that twinkle in the eye, and I was like, "Gotta, I gotta get this now. I gotta do this." So registered the name, and then we actually started making the very sold the very first lockets. I think for january maybe mm-hmm. right before our uh, daughter elise was born she was born on january 7th i joined you guys were busy in january yeah yeah <laughs> and i think we sold our very first locket on lock it to you on on the etsy site right before elise was born and then um it was really interesting we're in the hospital and I think I think Miranda was actually in labor, maybe <laughs> at the time. And I there there was this uh, ABC News did a little story on MC Hammer and mm-hmm. Twitter. And seriously, I I got onto Twitter because of MC Hammer. It I I know it's kind of a weird thing, but he said he said something. <laughs> <laughs> that, re- that really just just struck with me mm-hmm. on that, and it was like it, Twitter. What it does is it breaks down all the barriers of you yourself, your product, mm-hmm. to the people that want to buy it, mm-hmm. and it just kind of clicked. And I just like, I got to do it. I got to join it. So I signed up, and I was like, How am I going to do this? I was, you know, what am I? Am I going to sign up? Is just myself, my name, or lock it to you? And went to it, and I just kind of slowly got into Twitter with the lockets and everything. It took you a little while to it get took, the, it took the hang me, of it. it, it yeah. Because at first, you, I remember you tweeted a lot of merchandise things. Cut, yeah. And and people it, wanted more Scott yeah, content. Yeah, it, it was that. It was definitely a learning curve, learning figuring it out. It took me a good solid day, I think, to really, you know, a couple of days. But then I was hooked, mm-hmm. and I just devoured everything that i could on every site about what to do with it and in the meantime i I, as i noticed and i developed it and stuff the lockets just really started taking off Mm -hmm. and just started we started having really really good days of selling the lockets uh during a time when you know people buying stuff it's not it's not a really hot time to be buying gifts january february yeah 
and um, it, it was very interesting to see how the power of Twitter, social media, could really influence um, it just what it, it just really introduces you, and it, it really made me think about uh, branding what you do and how to get out there. And I, I really had to sit down and think. What is my Twitter presence? What is my social media presence going to be? Mm -hmm. Because there, there are times where I would just love to say some things on Twitter or Facebook or something. But you have to hit that mute button on yourself. I just, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I think we all say some things sometimes that we wish that we could take back. But whenever you do that out, you know, out there in the the internet, <laughs> it's it's you really have it's to be there careful. Forever. Yeah, it's there forever. But the main thing is that. Um, it, it, it's just we feel very fortunate that we can go from um uh we live in a time basically we able to market this business on um basically for free yeah and, and reach so many people all because over the world you have not done any traditional marketing no no i i, I messed around in the early days with uh magpie and not very many people even really know what that is. There's like an advertising thing that was on Twitter and it, you know, I, I got a little bit of results from it, but pretty much everything, you know, following the Google analytics and everything on the site, you, all of our traffic was basically coming through Twitter and, and, and then Facebook. So but, before you started doing Lock It To You, how much internet stuff i mean you know do you know what i mean it was did you have yeah. a blog did you no, do social networking no, sites no none of that stuff it was basically whenever it, it, for people that don't know what etsy is etsy is like um it is the gold standard of on the internet as far as like handmade craft i movement. call it a giant craft fair on the internet it is yeah. it is and it, it's more of just like the craft of like mm, it really kind of showed like like the new crafters, the new DIY generation mm -hmm. and stuff really showcased that. They're from Brooklyn, very, you know, very super cool people and all that stuff. And and it, the thing, though, with Etsy, though, it's very closed mm -hmm. where Etsy sellers were selling to other Etsy people. It yeah. was just a very closed loop mentality. And to get any kind of really good traffic on etsy a lot of people you know you have to list a lot of things a day and yeah. every time you list something you're paying etsy every time you sell something you're, you're paying, paying etsy on top of like your paypal and your other stuff and etsy definitely was pushing you know like buy these showcases and mm -hmm. buy you know buy these spots and stuff on there and so it it's was, a good way to get started yeah absolutely i have nothing but great things to say about etsy and mm -hmm. The people that run it it's just that we kind of outgrew it mm -hmm. and it and plus you know learning this and stuff i really saw like the power of twitter facebook uh flickr even mm -hmm. just going and just it's kind of fun you get to go and read these people's blogs like like your blog and melissa lyons and uh, a whole bunch of other people here in portland and see mm -hmm. wow you know portland has such a wealth of talent in this and uh, just learning so much like even at the beer and blogs mm -hmm. which is a lot of fun i mean i had a couple conversations at just a couple of the beer and blogs i've been to and i learned more in like five minutes from amber case i mean she just like totally explained everything to me in basically like five minutes and i was like i now understand i it's now know like exactly i exactly that's what happened and i was like and i and Miranda, I, you know, I was like trying to explain this to her, and it's like, no, no, you don't understand. I now understand how to do this. It's like it, it, it's like this whole secret was unlocked. Mm -hmm. And once I really started applying this philosophy to it, it, it's just snowballed very gradually. And it actually, I've purposely slowed down mm -hmm. because. Um, we were actually working with uh, vintage stock. Our first lockets yeah. were lockets that were made in the 1970s. They were just surplus? They, they were from estate sales. Whenever we would get them, they'd be wrapped up in newspaper from like 1975 from the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And um, with any kind of success like that on, 
on Etsy and everything, we got copycatters. We got people that were copying what we were doing mm -hmm. and they bought out our stock. So it was like very quickly we had to like, holy cow, you know, like we went to like the next level yeah. very fast. We now get the, the lockets manufactured. Uh, unfortunately, overseas, we looked very hard for a, a supplier here in the States, um, but it's, if you're it's a domestic maker, exactly, of exactly, and it's funny. And it, it, Contact it, Scott. Exactly, and the sad thing about it is that we would actually pay a premium to mm -hmm. have these lockets made in the United States. Yeah, but it's you know it's just the times uh, have changed now. Yeah. So, but uh, we we've quickly. Grown. Do you do anything to ensure? And I I mean I can look at I have some lockets I could check and I haven't <laughs> found anything. Do you need do anything to brand them so that you know, you can. Oh no, I didn't make that. No, that one's not mine. That's a, with like a stamp. That's a counterfeit locket well, to you. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about. We've definitely talked about that and how to do it. Um, it it is interesting because they are know, little pieces of art. They are, yeah. Thank you, thank You're you. Welcome. That's that's how we like to see it. Is like we do put a lot of energy and thought into it. We try to be consistent in the overall feeling, the style mm -hmm. that we want to evoke. Our most popular lockets, I believe, are lockets that give you like that really strong emotional connection to it. Mm -hmm. um, so the ones that have more of a nostalgic feel? I think so, yeah. I think I think something uh some are you know that that feeling comes from like the title that we give the, the locket. Mm -hmm. And maybe we give like a little backstory. Mm -hmm. Just something, you know, just like uh, one of our, the very first lockets that really took off was just a plain blue locket with a triplane on it. And mm -hmm. we called it going somewhere. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, that locket, I think it was because it was the springtime, is a really nice color. And it was something new and it was shiny. And it just kind of picked up in that locket. We sold a lot of that. Uh, just a really simple. And it just kind of, I think it was like that essence of travel and and everything with that that inspired you know speaking of travel when did you guys relocate to portland yeah <laughs> uh, i am a transplant mm -hmm. um everyone's a transplant everyone's a transplant here okay actually <laughs> yeah we've got two non-transplants in the but, room, but um uh i moved here i i lived six years in salt lake and that it's like the longest decade of my life. Uh, whenever I, I remember when I very first moved to Salt Lake City, uh, everybody was saying, move to Portland. Mm -hmm. it, like, y you need to move to Portland. And I was really afraid of moving up here because I've, I've heard terrible things about the rain and the weather in the winter because I uh, the seasonal affective disorder, mm -hmm. I, you know, I suffered from that. So I was really scared. Like, oh, I could not handle the winters up here in Portland. And after just finally just... I moved to uh, moved to Salt Lake after I moved back to Chicago for a few months. Uh, I moved moved to Portland uh, October of two thousand, mm -hmm. and then my wife Miranda moved here from New Jersey two weeks later, and then we met in March of two thousand one at a at a job, mm -hmm. and uh, then we got married and had a baby, and then. Uh, the I can we could never really find really good solid work mm -hmm. that um, gave us the health insurance that we needed and everything. So I, I had an opportunity to move to Chicago for a really good job, and we took that. We we're very miserable in Chicago. <laughs> um, we wanted to move back within I think the first week or two. We had like these crazy plans of how do we get back to Portland? How do we? You know, yeah. we stuck it out. Um, I did some good stuff there. Uh, Miranda actually started her Etsy business in Chicago. The so, Button Envy? Mm-hmm, the Button Envy. And we did craft shows and stuff around Chicago. Um, but our whole purpose was to get back to Portland and to make it work here. Mm -hmm. And because we had such great friends here and Miranda's mom moved here from New Jersey. And then, you know, we moved away. So that was kind of a, you know, we, we needed to get back here. So we always knew. So was kind of the the purpose of starting this business to facilitate you coming home, and by home I don't mean where you're born. I mean right, right. People who move to Portland often it's 
No, I, I mean, I, I was, uh, I remember, I, I worked construction management before, actually, mm-hmm. in Chicago, and, um... Did you I, break people's knees? Yeah, I just, well... But I'd check. I, I, I would have to get, yeah, it, it's... It, it can, the the world of construction in Chicago is especially. I mean, I I knew people that carried around a couple thousand dollars all times just to bribe the city officials, and the city officials would take it. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's nothing new being said about Chicago, and I you know I I never, I've never heard yeah oh exactly goodness, no. exactly. But I you know luckily I never had to deal with anything like that. But um, I you know I I remember like. As my job was ending in Chicago, that that three year project, I was offered, I don't know, three or four jobs that paid just as much, if not better, mm-hmm. and I turned them all down, just because we were having another baby. Our son Adriel was starting kindergarten, so it's like twenty years in Chicago. The next twenty years, are we going to stay here, or else are we going to go back to Portland? Yeah, and we came back here, and pretty much the only job that I was offered that paid maybe ten dollars an hour, and going from what I was making in Chicago and and doing something that made less than half of what I was making in Chicago, and not the responsibility and not the basically the type of work that I knew that I could do and is capable of doing. I was like, let's just focus on this. Mm-hmm. Let's let's really develop this. Let's really come on. I mean, I was, it was real. It was the craziest time to do it to start a business. We're having a baby our son starting kindergarten mm-hmm. and it's like we're going into the the this is the time when everything was going in the crapper in the economy yeah everything and that's all you're hearing negative 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 and it just kind of all right let's do it it's you're not selling some like you're not trying to sell a new car or a house right or furniture it's the it's the lipstick and nail polish clause have you ever heard about that so, yeah, I, I've heard, yeah. When the economy tanks, sales in lipstick and, like, small cosmetics mm-hmm. tend to go up because it's something that you can still do to feel good about yourself. Right. And I think the most, and also that, plus, from our experience in different craft shows and everything, I mean, the very first thing we actually made was actually baby clothes at Saturday Market. Mm-hmm. And we always looked at the people selling jewelry and, like, they sold a lot. Mm-hmm. People, I, it doesn't matter if it's a $10 ring or whatever, or maybe even a $150 necklace or whatever. They were always selling it. People are always buying jewelry. Mm-hmm. And especially if you can offer them something very unique and new and an affordable price that lasts, mm-hmm. they go for it. So, so it seems like this whole... Um craftsmanship and um and artisanship has grown up on like its own little fringe of the tech community it's not just arts and crafts it's not just jewelry it's also like i mean and is it just because you're using technology to sell and to market it yeah yeah i've uh, well i'm a geek mm-hmm. i i mean i i could talk okay, up you're I, yeah friends. i could talk up storm you know with like we could talk about next generation you know compared to you know the new stuff, enterprise, the new Maybe movie. Maybe we'll get to that now. In, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, for me, I, I've always kind of kicked myself in the butt for not going down that route in college mm-hmm. with computers and with other things and with technology because I don't think I was exposed to like maybe the overall potential mm-hmm. of it at that time, where I was more um, steered towards going to economics, going to russian like you know whatever mm-hmm. you know do something like that where you could you know i think my i think my dream when i was younger was to be a financial planner <laughs> or you know something <laughs> like that so i'm not mocking you yeah but you know <laughs> i mean yeah, financial plan i know if anybody knows me knows that 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 kind of like button down corporate world is yeah, i can't just, see you it was very but tough for me that. to do that yeah. in chicago it was you know very tough to wear it you know, suit and tie every day. And even though I was in construction, I was the guy wearing the white hat and was in the big Clipboard. meetings. And s- exactly. And then yeah. 
the blackberry all the time we've got some construction helmets yeah, I saw, in here. yes the helmet cam helmet cams they're a little you know more laid back than yes. your traditional white hat but. yes but uh yeah i i the, yeah in the corporate world was killing me yeah. it, 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 i was miserable Miser yeah. absolutely just uh i'd come home i was just unmotivated uh, i gained a lot of weight um my health was you know definitely not where it the should corporate been. world can certainly make your health it, suffer. It, it is yes yes and there are some people that you Thrive. know that that do just fine with that yeah i i did not do fine with an email from my boss at one in the afternoon on a friday saying i need you to type up this email and send it to this vice president and this vice president uh explaining why you need to keep your job you know, I that kind of Thank stuff. You. Yeah, I just you know, I was just like, really, you know. I mean, I just come on. I know nobody's going to read this email anyway. Yeah. So I was always like tempted to just be like, you know, you know, give them some kind of like Holden Colfield type of answer <laughs> or something like that, and just see. That'd if be the even... one email somebody read. Yes, exactly, exactly. But so you decided to kind of make your own way. Yeah, yeah. and it it. it it was kind of out of necessity of like we need to make money, mm -hmm. so there was that driving factor behind it, and also like, well, we would be making about the same amount of money right now if I went and started pumping gas at a gas station or something too. So yeah, this, this is probably a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun, and plus the big thing is that I get to take my kid to school every day mm -hmm. and pick him up mm -hmm. most days and hang out with the baby and uh hang out with miranda and you know i mean I, i'm very very lucky that i'm working with my best friend mm -hmm. every day and even though it, it, it's like well, she is like the real artist mm -hmm. miranda is the one i mean she is the brainchild of lock it to you mm -hmm. and i'm just the one that like really is like i i like lockets I, I've always liked them as a kid, mm -hmm. and this is something kind of interesting. And I could see like, I it I just see it as like a little one and a quarter inch diameter canvas for me, mm -hmm. and something like that, that that I can like really focus on and do interesting effects with spray paint and other digital collages and stuff, and make something kind of new in design. I've always been intrigued by design. Um, it's uh, it just been a fun fun thing and. And it's really interesting, like how we've developed and changed our approach to it, and how we just our assembly line process and get getting faster. I mean, it's like some days it's like we have a great discovery of like how to put masking tape on a locket and stuff. I'm like, if we do it this way, oh my gosh, you know. And it's like we're always coming up with like these little innovations and mm -hmm. stuff. And that's you know, I mean, most people are like, oh, okay, whatever. But What's we're the thing. They're all. If you look on the Flickr or on their uh, their Facebook page, there's pictures of the uh, manufacturing area. Yeah, which, uh, which, 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 which would be called up. as a dining room. Mm -hmm. You know, any place else. Yeah. But we do not have a dining room. <laughs> we have a studio. Mm -hmm. So the studio, the locket it's, studio. It's right, the the locket studio. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, we, we sacrifice, right now we are sacrificing uh, living space mm -hmm. and some other creature comforts mm -hmm. so we can make this work. Mm -hmm. like, we don't have cable. We don't have cable either. You're not missing anything. We don't. Here's a, here's a shocker, Cammie. <laughs> we don't even have cell phones. I know that because I had to meet you somewhere one day. Yeah. For lunch, and I was like, "Well, what's your cell phone number so I can yeah, call you?" We, 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 and you um, were like, "Yeah, we don't, we don't have those." Yeah. And I was like, <gasps> "We really, you know, we." Um, but you know, here's well, it was, it was costing us a lot of money, mm -hmm. and we get we get our cell phone over the internet now with our uh, internet service provider. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, yeah, you know, I mean, it's at times we miss it, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, I mean, we'll get it back. You could I mean, almost somebody. be Amish, except for all the technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, just thinking. Yeah, and it's that religion thing, too. Oh, yeah, yeah there's yeah, that. They, they kind of go to church a lot. <laughs> so, aside from just, you know, going to the beer and blog and learning about the technology, you've also um, partnered with at least 
one, you've hitched your wagon to at least one person who's doing something very unique yeah, yeah. on another fringe right. of the Portland tech scene. She's taking all of the technology that she's been able to gather in her years of experience mm-hmm. and um, through friends in the Portland tech scene, uh, Michelle Anderson, mm-hmm. media chick, who is right. writing the miracle in July. Right, right. That, that uh, I think that's just a, um, I, I mean, that's, it's kind of match made in heaven right there, I think. As a matter of fact, if you watched The Square tonight, right. Steph Strickland was wearing one of the right. Miracle in July lockets. That's right, yeah. It, it's really kind of... It, 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 to kind of go back where I was starting on this with like Twitter and everything mm-hmm. on this, I, I, I'm i kind of a guy that sets goals. Mm-hmm. And one of my goals was like, get Stephanie Strickland mm-hmm. to wear a locket to you locket on mm-hmm. air and to be on Strange Love Live. And both of those things happened tonight. Man, so I mean, it's I'm a not, good day for you. Guys. It is. No, it's it's been a very big week, and uh, it's also another people that we help work out with is uh, Live Wire. Mm-hmm. Donate lockets to them, mm-hmm. and uh, I like to do you know to help out uh, Melissa Lyon and her work with Backfence PDX. There's and, another big event that you guys are going to be sponsoring through lockets. Yeah. There's a couple more, actually. Well, I was thinking about the one I'm involved <laughs> yeah. with, but 30-hour day. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Um, we, um, it, It's really serendipitous that you asked us to help you out with that is because Miranda and I, we were just talking about we really need to find some charities or somebody that we can really get behind. And whenever you approached me with this, I was like, okay, this really kind of helps out. Because this, this is the, busy, the busiest time of year for us yeah. right now is basically from... I would say early October to it's about the, a week before Christmas. The gift giving time. Yeah. 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 It's just. That's what we want to do on right now. We were thinking holiday season. Right. Yes. Good time. Yes. Now is the time to buy a locket. <laughs> I already bought someone in my family a locket <laughs> for Christmas like a month ago. Right, I was yeah. like, that's perfect for that person. Yeah. In case we, she watches it, I, yeah, she'll we know have, she is, Yeah, but. we we are getting the emails right now. This is a I am already buying my Christmas gifts, you know, mm-hmm. and that's that's great, and really love that. And we are coming out with more uh, Christmas themed lockets as well, and also Hanukkah. Mm-hmm. I've got a couple of good Hanukkah lockets I've nice. got planned. Um, something that is not going to like hit you right over the head and say this is a christmas locket like a christmas sweater but you know something <laughs> not an ugly christmas locket yeah exactly nice christmas but locket. but we are going towards um you know definitely be on top of like the seasonal thing what's coming up you know and everything mm-hmm. mother's day is another big big holiday i would holiday. think yeah. i would think that mother's day would be a huge mother's holiday day. And then birthdays, a lot of people get the lock. Luckily, for birthdays. those are spaced out throughout. The yes, year. <laughs> it's it, it's amazing how that works out. And, uh, and Arbor Day too. No. <laughs> I know I'm going to get everyone a lock uh, yes, for Arbor Day. Yes, everybody That's needs. What yes. I do for Arbor yes. Day. <laughs> <laughs> Last year I did aprons. Next year I'm doing lockets. Well, everybody should. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Miracle in July. Miracle in July. How did that? And the, um, the locket is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, we Michelle approached uh, us about um, taking the artwork that she had commissioned for Miracle in July. She said that basically a lot of people have like not just responded to Michelle's story, but just everything that encompasses the imagery the and imagery, the music. The music. And the, yeah, she's done and, an amazing job of piecing it all together. Right. And the locket just really fits in because we just discovered a new technique basically where we can put pretty much just about any image on the locket and Mm -hmm. make it look really well i mean Mm -hmm. something that uh comes up uh there is you know some secret stuff that goes on there it's the secret sauce it is it is and that you know we don't really divulge too much there are some trade secrets involved and it's just from the experience of putting these things together all the time Mm -hmm. um and you know it is something that you know you you protect your source code correct we protect how we put these things together i have wicked source code yeah. <laughs> no, so uh, <laughs> i know what dr normal is laughing about he's thinking about something i said the other day <laughs> so um, um uh yeah michelle it's just it's great i we I I know that uh, with our with our website locktoyou.com, which is in its infancy, 
and we just got off at Etsy. Thanks to Megan Kate. Megan Kate, right, helped us out a great deal. And I know that Michelle helped out Megan a lot too. And mm -hmm. and so thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Megan. And and also, you know, I, I know that I've been able to like put out a couple of tweets like help me why do i do this that's and the nice thing about the portland community is that you can send out those yeah tweets and someone will always jump in and say yeah. what is it that you need exactly. this is what i can do exactly and that is a big reason why i actually chose to go on wordpress is because i there's not a there's not a large community for any of the other blogging platforms here in portland there are wordpress people right. coming out of the walls here right. and they're all willing to help right and also, I really, I wanted our site not just to be an e-commerce site. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't want it to just be something that... You wanted to be able to use the story behind the lockets. Yeah, I wanted to do that. And also, I, I, I'm i a big fan of like, hey, this is what we do. We kind of got a kooky life. Mm -hmm. My wife's from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. That right there should tell you. You know, Something. you should really read our blog. You should really come up because that's kind of like me making sure that people know the Doctor Normal used to be in a hair band at Tokyo. Yeah, <laughs> everybody knows. It's everybody okay. knows. Everybody knows. He's exactly everybody knows that us. YouTube clip. Yes. Um, so. Well, we are bumping up against the end of the tech edition, but let's tell everyone one more time: it's lock it to you, number two. Lock it to two. you, like sock it to you. You but say lock it to you. Lock it to you. Lock it With to the you. number two. The number two. Dot com. Mm -hmm. You can find him at lock it to you on Twitter. Can mm -hmm. we tell him Miranda's Twitter name? At uh, McRainey on Twitter. And no, also uh, at facebook.com slash lock it to you. Yep. We got our hundred and some odd follow fans now. And mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so that's great. And I just want to say thank you to everybody in Portland um, that have given us support. Uh, you know, retreating stuff. You're it's doing just, it right. So, just That's, really, it's it's good. You guys are doing it right, and I think it, in Portland that makes all the difference. Yeah, I think I think also like the the number one thing that I can say as far as like um, being on Twitter, social media is being a genuine person. Exactly. That's you, what I mean by you're doing it right. You're you, not. Yeah. You. Yeah. You, you really. You just cannot be. Saying, "Hey, look at this! Look at this! Look at this! Look at this! Look Correct. at this!" But also, you don't want to be like, "My life sucks right now." You know, you you got to find that happy medium. You know, <laughs> you'd be like, "Hey, you know, yeah, times are tough, but hey, we're all going to get through this." Exactly. And that's and, the great thing about. And on that note, let's say goodbye to the people who are watching the Tech Edition. We'll be right back with After Hours. I hope you'll join us for that as well.